is going on, fellow Sambarians? Today I was going to do a little video on the O2 sensors, on the fuel injected versions of the Sambars. Um, of course, the, at least I don't think, the carbureted versions have um, O2 sensors because they uh, wouldn't have a brain or an ECU that would tell it, you know, <clears throat> we're running lean or we're running uh, rich. So uh, I haven't, I don't know if I just said this, but I haven't seen any videos doing O2 sensors for the EMPIs or the EFI uh, versions of the sandbar. So I was going to do a little video on the O2 sensor. So uh, originally I'm from California, so we all kind of know the O2 sensor as the uh, one thing from keeping us from passing smog because it would always throw check engine lights, at least if you were running a high flow cat or anything other than factory uh, would usually trip the O2 sensors into giving you a check engine light and that's always fun to deal with when you're trying to pass smog on a car that's modified and you don't want to put stuff back to stock which they do make little cheats for that, but I'm not gonna say how because I don't want to get in trouble. But <clears throat> you can figure that out on your own. So these, uh, fortunately, I don't have to smog in Washington. So that's a good thing about this state, moving away from California. Uh, they do supposedly help the engine run uh, more efficient, um, better fuel economy just because it's metering you know, if there's uh, if there's more fuel in the air, in the exhaust, or you're running lean or rich, and it's gonna adjust accordingly. Um, it's supposed to adjust the ECU accordingly. I don't know how much of an effect a O2 sensor has on the sandbar, but you are supposed to change these um, at some point. So I figured, hey, you know, this is kind of a fresh import. Uh, as of less than a month ago or a month ago from good old Lawrence or Larry, sorry. I think his Facebook name is Lawrence, but he goes by Larry. Uh, good old Larry. Um, so I'm gonna do the O2 sensor on this, showing you how to wire this in because it uh, it's obviously universal. Okay, so obviously what you're gonna need is your O2 sensor, which I'll uh, have a link in the description below if you're looking for one. Um, not very expensive. Worth changing if you're bored and, I mean, it doesn't hurt. It's not going to hurt anything. It might potentially make it run a little better. Uh, and you're going to need uh, a 7 8 And you probably want to wait for it to cool down if you just moved it because it's going to be hot. So if you're wondering where it connects to this, uh, let's see here, this connector right here, this white guy on the very end, uh, is your, uh, connection to the O2 sensor. So I'll, uh, unplug it and, uh, it's starting to get all bound up and not loosening anymore. So we'll unplug this guy and uh, release some of that wind up so we can pull it out. I also just posted this morning in in the sandbar group that I'm in, um, you notice when you pop either the bumper on the van or the engine cover hatch on the truck, you'll see an emission sticker. So it doesn't really mean anything to us uh, other than it looks cool because it looks factory, that you still have that sticker in there on your bumper or that engine cover. Um, I actually uh, got a hold of um, a good uh, image for the sticker, so I'm going to start printing those if you need a replacement sticker for that emissions rectangle. It's silver, it's usually like right here. 
uh, on the cover, you'll notice it. If it's not there, then it means that you're missing it because they do uh, come with it. And it just talks about um, timing and uh, the catalyst and all that information for smog, I'm guessing, in Japan. So uh, if you're if you're needing a replacement, uh, I'll have a link in the description for that as well. Okay, so let's get this guy unplugged. They do, uh, they discontinued one version of it, and that's actually the version that I have, is the discontinued version. And then they have a, a version they're still uh, making, which is, uh, there's a, an EMPI version and a carbureted version. I mean, unless you speak Japanese, you're not going to notice the difference. Um, so I have the discontinued version available. Okay, so we got it unplugged up here. Uh, and uh, let's see here. It kind of goes underneath the gray connector, which I'm assuming goes to your uh, distributor. And then it looks like it's got another mounting point on the uh, intake strobe on the intake manifold there's another plastic carrier okay and that should just feed out bottom i know you can't really see it but if you're in there you'll notice it okay now we can get the o2 sensor out so here we go. Uh, so here's our uh, one we pulled off. It is slightly different looking, but I'm sure it does the same deal. And if I'll save it in case it runs crappy, then we'll know it didn't uh, it didn't switch over. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this heat shielding on here. And I'm going to cut this uh, crimp end off, run this heat shield tubing um, down it, and then reconnect this uh, connector to it. So it plugs right back in to uh, stock. Well, here, see, it's just the tips are different, but it's still grabbing. Still grabbing gassy air. I'm full of gassy air. Okay, so we got our O2 sensor on and just make sure that they have like the high temp anti-seize on that thing before you put it back in there. Okay. Thread it back in. Clip it back into the clip that's on the, uh, that's on like the intake manifold. Up underneath. Gray wire and plug it in. In. Okay, so I got that tightened up. Uh, it took a 22 mil for the Bosch, but didn't exactly fit right, so I'd maybe go be safe with a 21. But, rewind. Uh, I probably should have mentioned. As you can see, I don't have the exhaust uh, manifold heat shield. Uh, might be a little difficult with the heat shield still attached. Um, I took it off so I could run my exhaust um, and it was cracked. So I ordered a new one. I have a new one coming. Um, so it's obviously exposed and everything's pretty uh, easy to get to. So if you're thinking of doing a heat shield, 
you might as well do your O2 sensor while the heat shield is gonna be off. Um, it may be possible with the heat shield on. I'm not entirely sure because I don't remember what it looked like prior. So uh, I apologize if uh, I made that look a lot easier than it should have been, but I don't have my heat shield. So again, if you're doing a heat shield, maybe do the O2 sensor, you're already there. Just kind of like doing a clutch. You're already there, do the seal, do the throw out bearing. You already, you already got the engine split. So you might as well do some stuff while it's exposed. So uh, yeah, which a clutch video uh, will hopefully be coming soon. Uh, my buddy Scott's gonna be doing uh, some clutch work on one of his many sandbars, which uh, if you're if you're in the market for sandbar uh, supercharged, uh, he will have one available. So uh, you can uh, hit me up and I'll get you in connected. Get you connected with Scott. But uh, yeah. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful with the O2 sensor. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get better gas mileage. Maybe she'll run more efficient. Who knows? Uh, next video is probably going to be a fuel filter and that will be on obviously fuel injected so it is different than the carbureted which i have a carbureted fuel filter change video made as well you can check out this one's just going to be a little bit different uh same location just um a bigger fuel filter uh because it's under a lot more pressure but yeah hopefully that was helpful uh, cool take it easy guys good luck